Hey guys, this is Bruce, and we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're gonna be talking about the Mueller report, specifically the cybersecurity in the Mueller report. I'm not gonna get too political. That's not the intention of this particular video. What I wanna do is talk about the Mueller report from the perspective of a cybersecurity person who's been doing this since 2000. Uh, from a risk management perspective, from an information system security officer perspective, so that we can learn a little bit more together. And I want to show you the severity of this because I feel like it doesn't get talked about enough. Um, they kind of focus on the legal aspects and um, more, more specifically the president. But there's something in here that is more important that i um, surprised more people don't talk about and um, it affects all of us. And I think by the end of this, you'll uh, know how severe this is. If you haven't done so already and you're a cybersecurity person, uh, or you're trying to be a cybersecurity person, you should really take the time to read the Mueller report. It's about 400 pages, and the first chapter specifically talks about cybersecurity and how the U.S. elections were hacked. This really did happen. There's several different sources that verify it. This is not some kind of conspiracy. It's not fake news. This is absolutely real. And as you read it and see the sources and everything, you'll see uh, for yourself that it's real. Nobody's denying this. So this is the one part of this whole thing that's nonpartisan eyes that we got attacked. Not even Trump himself denies that uh, the United States was attacked online by the Russian government. Let me be totally clear in saying that, and I've said this many times, I accept our intelligence community's conclusion that Russia's meddling in the 2016 election took place. This is the one part we can all agree on, and that's the part I'm gonna be focused on. There's a quote by Sun Tzu that says, by discovering the enemy's dispositions and remaining invisible ourselves, we can keep our forces concentrated while the enemy must be divided. What Russia did was brilliant. And so right now, the Republicans and Democrats, the conservatives and liberals, the people on these extreme parts of the party are now at each other's throats. Nobody can take the U.S. in a one-on-one -on -one battle, not without either destroying the planet or destroying themselves. Because there's never been, in the history of humanity, there's never been a more powerful military. And what Russia did was use a powerful weapon against the U.S. This is one thing that they did that was brilliant that, um, that has crippled the U.S. And that's that they put us against one another. And you'll see what I mean going forward. So in the Mueller report, it talks about this agency called the Internet Research Agency, or IRA, LLC. And what it is, is just a bunch of troll farms, and it's doing the bidding of the Russian government. To give you an example, a bird's eye view of what they did, we'll just take one instance where they made a fake account called At Woke Blacks. This is a fake account where the IRA pretended to be a part of Black Lives Matter and told black people, don't vote. Don't vote. It's not worth it. Throw your vote away. Let's boycott the elections. So Black Lives Matter is one, one group that they actually made all these fake accounts. And this is just one of many that they created and uh, would make these huge followings, get people to follow. They also attacked uh, the GOP, actually. So, for example, they had one account called at 10 underscore GOP where they pretended to be connected to the Tennessee Republican Party. And what would they do? All kinds of stuff. They infiltrated Black Lives Matter movement, the LGBT movement, as well as right-wing groups to create division. So they would get into Black Lives Matter, tell black people don't vote. They'll get into LGBT, tell them to do things. Basically, they just put one group against the other group. And it was, I think it's brilliant because it, it worked. Because the greatest strength is also the greatest weakness of the U.S. The U.S.'s greatest strength is diversity. They take from the greatest minds in the world, the greatest talents in the world come to the U.S. and basically participate in this great experiment it's called the this great experiment called the United States of America. But think about the greatest scientists, your Albert Einstein, your 
many other inventors, your Elon Musk, all these people came from different countries to come here to do something huge, something huge that many times spread to the rest of the world. But those guys, you know, they, they lived in another country and they came here to do something big. That's diversity, right? But one of our great, our greatest strength is also our greatest weakness because it's really hard to be around people with different cultures, with different faces, with different intentions and all come together and, and try to work things out. And so they use that greatest weakness against us by sowing division, getting in these groups like Black Lives Matter, getting in, infiltrating groups like LGBT and knowing uh, the weaknesses and uh, trigger words to make them do certain things. And it worked. They created about 3,841 Twitter accounts. They organized rallies. Think about that. They organized rallies from Russia in the United States. In some cases, they had scores of people show up at those rallies. A music video for a group called Black Matters US. Rallies against police brutality. All she wants is power. Denunciations of Hillary Clinton. Even self-defense classes run by a group called Black Fist, all part of a sophisticated campaign targeting America's black communities, run out of this building in St. Petersburg, Russia, according to congressional investigators. And here's the crazy thing that the Mueller report also mentions is that they would collect personally identifying information about targets. The targets are you. If you're an American, the target is you. If you happen to be on Facebook, if you happen to be on Twitter, then the target is you. And they would mimic the demographics of these people. They'd mimic the names. But for example, if there was a, say, a single black father who had two kids and his name was like Dion and he lived in Alabama and he was part of the Black Lives Matter movement, they would take this guy's information and mimic it so that they can create a very similar demographic so they can connect with other people who are into Black Lives Matter who uh, like the same things as that person did. And they did this across the board to sow division. They'd infiltrate the group and then they would sow division and say crazy fringe type stuff to push that group more in a more extreme direction or to hate on another group that's in the U.S. that has an opposite um, feel feeling. Here's a couple of other examples. They created an account called at Pamela underscore more 13, a fake account that pretended to be a Texan Trump supporter with, and they gained 70,000 followers. This is the reach that they ended up having. They created another account called at Jen underscore Abrams. See how the name fits it. The name is, a, it sounds like an American name. Doesn't sound like anything uh, suspicious or out of the ordinary. Brilliant. It's a fake account that claimed to be a Virginian Trump supporter. This person, this fake account, this persona had 70,000 followers as well. They purchased 300, uh, 3,500 ads worth $100,000 according to Facebook. The IRA reached tens of millions of U.S. persons. The IRA created Facebook groups, many Facebook groups, and reached millions of people with these Facebook groups because, for example, they had one called United Muslims of America that had over 300,000 followers in that group, members in that group. They had one called Being Patriotic that had 200,000 members in that group. They had another one called Secure Borders in the Facebook group that had 130,000 followers. So as you can see, it, their campaign was extremely effective. I just want to show you this. So this is where I'm at in the Mueller report. If you do decide to read it, I highly, highly um, suggest that you check this out, especially if you're into cybersecurity, because the methods that they uh, used to sow division is just, it's just brilliant. Um, it's, and it's straight up warfare. There's no, there's no question about it. And what surprises me the most about all of this is that our own government is, has succumbed to it. They've completely, they complete, if you look at the media, 90% of what they talk about is um, legal ramifications of, 
of uh, the Trump administration. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't. I'm just saying that they should probably give this equal, if not more, coverage than what's happening right now. It's just they were able to successfully sow so much division that we are completely preoccupied with hurting each other. They created Instagram accounts with hundreds of thousands of U.S. participants. They had thousands of followers on Twitter. So they just use all aspects of social media in the United, that are popular in the United States to sow as much division as possible, and it absolutely worked. This is a pretty quick read, actually. If you just check out this first chapter, there's so much that's actually redacted that you can get right through this and still get the meaning and the impact of what they did. You can also do further research by looking into these resources that they put in here of all these other investigations that are currently taking place and other um, in investigations that were done. These troll farms were absolutely effective against the United States of America. What they wanted to do was influence public opinion in the United States. It absolutely worked. To do this, they had to know the United States' demographic. They had to know the politics on a very intimate level of the United States. They had to know all the players in the United States. This was an extremely effective campaign that's working even now. They don't even have to do anything else, and it's still working. This all started, by the way, in 2015, and it's still doing work for these guys. And the U.S. isn't the only country that they've done this in. They've done it in Estonia, they've done it in Ukraine, and I believe they may have even done it with Brexit. This was so effective that members of our own government actually retweeted a lot of the things that they created. So they name a few of the people who have actually retweeted some of the stuff um, that the IRA created. For example, on September the 7th, 2016, a post from IRA controlled Twitter account at Pamela underscore more 13 was retweeted by President Trump. On September 19th, 2017, President Trump's personal account responded to a tweet from the IRA controlled account that's called at 10 uh, at 10 underscore GOP it's the backup account of 10 underscore GOP now here's another one another fake um, account that uh, they put this poster out there online IRA created poster for Pennsylvania rally. They created a rally poster for a rally that they created. Look at this. When is it going to be? It's in October the 2nd at 2 o'clock. Where is it? It's going to be a still plaza, Pittsburgh. And they put out this little hashtag, hashtag Trump Pence 2016. On June 2016, until the end of the presidential campaign, almost all of the U.S. rallies organized by the IRA focused on the election. And they were promoting Trump, the Trump campaign and opposing the Clinton uh, campaign. And it worked. Lots of people showed up and it would get retweeted by these people. So long story short, the Russians, <laughs> uh, they were extremely effective. They definitely uh, won. And there's no other way to put it. Uh, this was extremely effective and it's still is still working right now they are more against one another than they are against an aggressor uh, from outside of our nation that affected our elections that's how effective it was what can we do as citizens what what do I do let me just explain to what you what I do why I was not affected by any of this these are some of the weapons that I personally use whenever I'm online I use multiple sources of information I use multiple news sources. I uh, check all the facts of any site. And there's tons of fact checking sites that help you, that can help you out. I don't always just go in these echo chambers like you'll see on Fox News saying pretty much everything you want to hear if you're conservative or CNN saying everything you want to hear if you happen to be a, a centrist, uh, liberal or 
uh, other other places like what you want to do is mix it up if somebody says something verify it go read something about it uh, go watch another video look at the other sides what is the other side saying about it find the actual facts do fact finding missions on on all the stuff that they're saying all the main points that they're saying another thing I do is uh, go by this philosophy if it sounds crazy it probably is I always double check the data um, also online you saw that what they would do is they would steal people's personas online including real names real locations real birth dates real demographics on their families and and all that kind of stuff I use aliases I don't put my real birthday on there I don't use any real information that you see about me uh, is <laughs> is not real I don't use my actual information on the internet use it as little as possible I know in some cases like if you're putting a resume out there or something like that um, you, you know you have to use your uh, as, as close to your real information as possible you know keep that separate from any kind of online dealings that you're doing yeah keep that stuff professional keep it separate keep it quiet you know keep that in its own lane don't mix those things together do not use your real persona out there because it will it's going to remain out there and somebody can use it against you critical reading and critical thinking is something um, i also do and it's why i'm not affected by this the fake news articles or uh, clandestine uh, cells that are putting out all this fake information. Um, you got to separate opinion from facts. Opinions are not facts. So when you see those opinion pieces from people like Sean Hannity or people like the Young Turks, you got to remember a lot of what they're saying is their opinion. They, you know, yeah, they spout out some facts every now and then, but you have to be able to. I'm not saying don't watch. Sean Hannity. I'm not saying don't watch Young Turks, don't watch this or don't watch that. I'm saying check their facts and know that their opinions are not facts. When they say their opinion, they might make you feel good, but that doesn't make it a fact. Uh, don't just read headlines. A lot of what I find myself doing is when I'm going through Reddit or whatever is I read the headline and I assume this or that. Um, if it's important to you, read the actual article. That's critical reading. Critical reading means like reading the article you know take note of the headline but read the content and understand the content take your time to understand it approach information with an open mind even if it's something that you don't necessarily agree with um, read it read through it and there'll be parts of it that you agree with and parts of it that you don't but come at it with an open mind look for facts check the facts and be objective when you're reading it see from the readers perspective when you're actually reading something or when you're actually viewing something online see from the readers perspective so that you can fully understand what they're trying to say be slow to judge and quick to question everything you see online those are the things that I use um, when I'm doing any kind of research or, or looking at any kind of information online I believe right now what's happening is something like a World War III, where it's a global information war, where it's governments versus individuals. So what's happening right now is the Russian government is actually trying to influence people in the United States, not the necessarily the, the elected officials. They're trying to affect the people who elect the elected officials. Uh, and you know, I think that this is something that our government does to individuals in other places. They try to influence, they try to use soft power to influence the people because the people are the people who have the control of the of the nations with them, especially with democracy. It's all about control of information. That's what's happening right now. And that's why it's imperative that you check all sources of information, all your news. Don't watch just from one uh, new source don't drink from just one source drink from many you know and try to get the facts that way that's it guys on the next one we're going to talk about what they actually did to hack how did they infiltrate all these different organizations and how far did they get how were they able to leak all this stuff to wikileaks what actually happened all right we'll talk to you later